This is part 15 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss updating data on the server by posting the Razor page back to the server. This is continuation to our previous video, part 14. So please watch part 14 before proceeding. At the moment, we are on the employees list page. When we click edit, we see the existing employee data. We can make changes to this data and when we click update, notice the page just refreshes and we lose the existing employee data. In this video, let's implement this update button functionality. This is iEmployee repository interface, the service interface. At the moment, we have two methods, get all employees and get employee. This method returns the employee by the provided ID. In addition to these two methods, to be able to update employee data, we need update method. And this method is going to take the employee object. This object contains the changes. And let's call this parameter updated employee. And this method is going to return the updated employee object. In most real world applications, it is common to have some properties updated automatically. For example, last updated date. For properties like this, we do not usually provide data from the user interface. It's either automatically computed by the web server or the database server. By returning the updated employee object back, we'll have access to those automatically updated properties. Our next step is to provide implementation for this update method. So within our mock employee repository class, notice we have a red squiggly under I employee repository. That's because we don't have the implementation for update method. So let's implement the interface. When I select this option, the method stub is automatically generated for us. Within our mock employee repository, the list of all employees are present in this private field underscore employee list. So the first thing that we want to do is find the employee from this list that we want to update. For that, we are going to use first or default link method employee such that employee dot ID equals updated employee dot ID. Let's store that employee in a variable of type employee and let's call the variable employee. If the employee variable is not null, that means we have found the employee object that we want to update. So employee.name equals updated employee.name. Similarly, email and department. And then finally, we want to return the updated employee object back. This completes the changes required from the service standpoint. Now let's look at the changes required within the edit razor page itself. This on get method responds to HTTP get request. Similarly, on post method responds to HTTP post. So let's include another public method that returns I action result and the name of the method is on post. And this method is going to take a parameter of type employee and let's call the parameter employee. Model binding in ASP.NET Core automatically maps the posted form values to this onPost method parameter. So the values from these form controls on our edit razor page will be automatically mapped to the respective properties on this employee object. So all that is left right now is to call our employee repository update method and then to this method let's pass the employee object and we know this update method returns the updated employee object. Let's store that in this public property employee. And then finally, redirect the request to the index razor page so we can see the updated changes. At the moment, we are on the home page. Let's navigate to the list razor page, click edit and then change the name to Mary1 and email to Mary1 at presumetech.com and let's also change the department to IT update. We can see the name is updated. When we click edit, we can see the rest of the updated changes. At the moment, to update employee data on the server, we're using this first approach. We included a parameter of type employee on this onPost method and model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map the values from these form controls on our edit razor page to the respective properties on this employee object. We can also achieve the same thing by using bind property attribute. 
With this second approach, we decorate our public property with this bind property attribute. This bind property attribute automatically maps the posted form values, that is, the values from these form controls on our edit razor page to the respective properties on this employee object. This object is then available inside on post method. We just pass it to the update method of the employee repository, which takes care of updating employee data on the server. At this point, you might be wondering which approach to use when. Well, it's largely dependent on where you want these posted form values to be available. If you want these posted form values to be available only inside on post method, then use this first approach because this method parameter is only available to on post method. It's not available to any other method. Whereas if you want the posted form values to be available to other methods as well, in addition to on post, then use this second approach because this is a property within this class. It's available to any other method within the page model class in addition to on post. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.